Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's excellent to have you here as always. Thank you for watching. Today, we're gonna to be painting a rifle. Now, I hear it told that there are many ways to skin a cat. Uh, personally, I have never skinned a cat before. I've done many other animals, but never a cat. But I have painted lots and lots of guns, and I can confirm that there are many ways to, to accomplish that. This is my way, and it may work for you, it may not, but you can let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. I'm trying to keep us out of the wind here when it's winter time and it's above 40 degrees, it gets kind of windy out here. But uh, there are lots of tactical paints out there, high quality finishes, think Duracoat, Cerakote. I've used both those products before, can vouch for them. They are fantastic, they last, and they do a great job. Uh, today, what we're gonna be doing is just a regular old Krylon job, even though this is a Rust-Oleum product, uh, a rattle can job, so to speak. Now, there are some advantages of a regular old rattle can job over one of those high-end finishes and the first is that it is cheap the second is that it is fast and the third is because it is cheap and fast if you screw it up or it gets screwed up along the way then it's not that big of a deal to redo it didn't like what you did when you rattle canned it you just spray over it scuff it up against the side of something and it doesn't add to the camo effect because in many instances it will you just respray it <laughs> so uh you don't have to use this particular paint. You don't have to use anything that says camouflage on it. It just simply needs to be a matte finish paint. The other stipulation is that the pigments in the paint should probably be something that exists in the environment that you're going to use it. Let's do the prep. Black out things that are important, like optic screens, laser uh, covers, anything that's got any adjustment on it that needs uh, the indicators visible, like thinks uh, the indicator dial on your uh, LPVO or something like that. Those numbers should probably be taped over. In this instance, uh, this gun isn't wearing optics or anything like that. So all I have done is black out the front and rear sight, right? So my side of the sight, if your rifle has a rubber butt pad, you strip that off and paint it separately uh, because the uh, metal, is going to absorb some of the paint, the rubber is not. So the rubber is gonna take longer to dry, and it's not that you shouldn't paint it, it's gonna look a little ratty once you start using it, but the real problem is if you're handling anything, uh, you're just gonna get it all over the place. So it is my suggestion that if you're concerned about getting it all over the place, then take that rubber butt pad off. Now, what I have here is the uh, minimalist stock from Mission First Tactical, the metal construction one, and it is all metal. So I don't have to worry about doing any of that. So we just have the two pieces there, and I am gonna go right for it with that suppressor mount as well. So uh, let's, uh, oh, you know what else? Uh, I've decided to leave the rail covers on as a test to just kind of, this one is really just for my fingers, and I wanna see if those are still effective after they've been painted a little bit or if it just kind of sloughs off. So we're doing a little bit of testing here as well. I just need to crack some of this uh, rock set off around the suppressor mount here and we should be ready to rock and roll as far as paint is concerned. I like to do three color schemes. You can do less, you can do more. It's totally up to you however you want to do it. The important thing is that you start with the darkest color that you plan to use. And the reason that we're going to do that is that this is going to form the base layer. It is then gonna get covered up, and as it gets covered up, this is gonna form our shadows. So we're gonna use this green, let's give her a good old shake, get her ready to rock and roll, and we're just gonna like lay into it. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's probably better if you go fast so it looks more organic. Now, while it's still wet, we take our next color. 
We just start with a mist. And then we take some kind of material. This is the stuff that I prefer to use uh, because it's everywhere. And it's got the really pronounced branches in the grass. So we'll just take a tuft about like that. For a line outline breakup. take our darker color that we started with and just do a little bit of back spray. And then for our last one, we're gonna take our bundle of material, we're gonna press it up against it this time and spray through it. Back to our darkest, just to darken the whole project back out because this uh, looks a little light for this environment. Now, I know what some of you are doing right now. You're like, oh my God, he painted his bolt carrier group. What on earth are we ever to do? Guys, it's fine. Uh, this part of the bolt carrier group very minimally interacts with anything inside the gun. Uh, you'll have most of your circumference that interacts is gonna be back here, and then the major point of interface between the upper receiver and the bolt carrier group is actually the rails, which are uh, down here and obviously we're not painted. Uh, to prove this to you, I have two rounds of 300 blackout here. <sighs> Works just fine. I guess what I'm trying to articulate is that it doesn't really matter. And if you're concerned about it, then don't do it that way. Personally, I wanted the uh, inside of the dust cover to be painted because it's the part of the dust cover that spends the majority of its time exposed, at least in my instance. Uh, if you want to do that and not disconnect it from the gun, then you can just tape over the, the bulk hair group if that's what you want to do. It doesn't really matter, especially because the majority of that is going to be blown off by the high velocity gases that come out of the vent ports there anyway. If Again, if you're concerned about that falling down inside the gun, then clean it more often for a little bit until the wear pattern establishes itself, but it's not really critical. And that'll bring me up to um, f closing thoughts on the paint job. So I went a little bit um, lighter in the tan because uh, a lot of the winter here ends up kind of tan, clay, brown, you know, but we also have a fair amount of snow most winters because it's winter time right now. And I was hoping that that lighter tan color would play a little bit more with the patchy snow. 
not really. <laughs> uh, so that is the critique of my own paint job. But I would also say this got enough green in it that when it comes around to springtime and we shift more towards a green tone, that we just get to spray over that a little bit with green. And it's going to bring the palette as far as the green complement up a little bit and it'll blend a lot better uh, in the springtime. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the thing that I said at the very beginning of the video, which is the great thing about you doing a spray paint job is that you can fix it anytime and you can change it multiple times a year. Whereas if you were going to do an expensive Cerakote or Duracoat finish, then you feel a little bit bad about uh, screwing it up by overspraying it if it needs to be doctored for either environment or just uh, continuity of finish type thing. But anyway, uh, this was just a quick video that I wanted to put out because I'm Probably when you're seeing this, I'm probably just now getting back from SHOT Show, and I'm probably sick. <laughs> so thank you all, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on another video, a regularly scheduled programming returning after this one. Bye.